Just wanted to let you know that our TTRPG Reddit stories are on Spotify in podcast form. Click on the link in the description and take us on the go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to more reading TTRPG horror stories. I am Duke, and this is Wife. I am Wife. And in this video, we have stories of a DM's policy breaking up a couple and also a DM being accused of bait and switching. But more importantly, Amy, what is the pillow or plushie you are cuddling today? It's Stitch, my best buddy. I, I shouldn't say best buddy, more like- Dang. <laughs> <laughs> like always, these videos are for us to provide advice for people who are caught in these situations and to avoid situations like this. And obviously our advice isn't final, so take it as you will. But are you ready for the first story? Yes. All right, this first one is a doozy. It is titled, My DMing Policies Broke Up a Couple. Sounds like a doozy. And now a word from our sponsor. Oh, hi, it's me, the Radger. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting dungeons. <laughs> How can you hunt a dungeon? It's not even alive. It was supposed to be a lead in to this video sponsor, Dungeon Hunter 6. Hey, I got a better idea. Be better. Ugh. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a free to play mobile ARPG with a unique hero collection feature in a stunning fantasy style. The gameplay features a fast paced hack and slash combat style with various builds and skills to utilize as you fight big bosses. Yeah, and it's absolutely free to play, so click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen if you're viewing from a PC. In Dungeon Hunter 6, bosses aren't just for defeating. Once conquered, you can loot, ride, and even fly them. Summon up to three bosses to join your squad, use their combo skills, and even shapeshift into them for unmatched power in the late game. With over 100 unique bosses and monthly updates, the possibilities in battle are limitless. This is a game changer in its genre. You know what else would be a game changer? Don't you say it! Okay. Well, okay then. Dungeon Hunter 6 takes its 3D graphics performance to the next level with stunning skill animations optimized for multicasting, ensuring the best visual experience and smoothest combat on mobile devices. Play with guildmates and battle in real-time guild wars. Grind with a variety of skill tree options to test builds and trade items via the auction system. And again, all of it is for free, so click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen if you're viewing from a PC. Using my link gets you a valued $50 special start pack that comes with 10 summoning scrolls, one SSR Lieutenant Demonic Wolf, one accessory pack, and use your account to enter the launch lucky spin event for free to win great prizes like an iPhone 15 Pro Max, PS5, Apple Watch, and more starting October 15th. Check out the description for details. Thank you, Dungeon Hunter, for sponsoring this video. Roger, the dungeon is running away. What, are you serious? No, I'm not serious. What is wrong with you? And now back to the video. So to set the scene, this occurred in weekly game that has been going on for the better part of three years. The group is me, DM, problem player, problem player's partner, also a player, and the other four party members, not important to the story. I always do a session zero for my games. Table rules will change depending on the system and group, but I have one constant rule in all of my games. No SA, assault or abuse. It doesn't come up in plots, character actions, backstories, or most importantly, in and out of character stuff. It is unwelcoming at my table, and I feel strongly about this. Problem player had literally never been an issue until last session. They are a pretty cool person, and I still think they made an error of judgment more so than being a bad person themselves. The party is pretty high level, and we're having a difficult encounter. The fight was not going well. Almost offhand, the problem player says, Man, this thing is ass aring us. I came down pretty hard right away and told them there is no SA at my table. You never know whose life has been affected by SA and so it doesn't happen. This is your only warning. Next time I'll kick you. They got really huffy with me and started arguing that it was only a joke. I admit I handled this badly. An argument ensued over the Discord call in which they kept repeating that it was a joke and I kept saying it didn't matter slash I didn't care. Eventually, they said something to the effect of anyone who gets upset about a joke is being a little bitch. I kicked them out and banned them from the server. Obviously, this ended the session. As I said at the beginning, I said their partner is also a player in my game. Apparently, what happened and what problem players said led to a huge fight between them and now they are breaking up because of it. 
I feel bad because as I said at the start, Problem Player had literally never done anything bad before. I think I had a right to stick up for my previous stated boundaries, but I didn't mean to cause a rift in their relationship over a game of D&D. Should I have been more patient? Am I the asshole here? OP goes through with a couple edits and says she was a survivor of SA. That's why she implemented the rules. The second edit is she did clarify that Yes, as the dungeon master, they didn't handle the situation correctly because this person was shocked because this rule was broken for the very first time. And that's just how they snapped at the problem player. They did have a conversation with them. They had three big conversations and they wouldn't say it went well, but progress was made. Comments are saying that the relationship was most likely hanging on by a thread and this is just the straw that broke the camel's back. The comments also say that, yes, the DM handled this poorly. Let's start with the first part where OP is very clear about, I set this ground rule, I set this policy, and I'm sure she did it in a very good way, especially if she has had personal experience. She probably didn't divulge that to them, but it was very like, I don't like messing around with this. And I respect that. I mean, I think it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, Nope, makes sense to me. Cool. But then the second part of it is when the rule is broken by this player. And again, she's probably paraphrasing a lot of what this player said versus what she said. Uh, sometimes you can remember exact verbiage, but then again, it may not be exactly what was said. Um, but regardless, how the OP is painting the person, it sounds to me that this individual was embarrassed to be called out. I mean, just as any adult years ago when I'm a kid, like if I'm called out for something or in, in class, it's like, oh my gosh, Amy, why would you do that? Or like, what did you say? You know, and just being like, oh, I, I freak out for a second and not know how to respond to being called out for something that I did that was quote unquote wrong and being really embarrassed about it. And there's quite a few ways to react and respond to that. Normally, you kind of want to like stand up for yourself in the way you're like you're embarrassed that you are embarrassed and you don't want to show that you're embarrassed kind of thing. I remember doing this as a kid. That's why the go to thing is, oh, is it just a joke? It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. <laughs> or I was just kidding. You know, that yeah. was some, oh my gosh, that was something all the time in like middle school. People would say if they said something really rude to someone and someone said, hey, that wasn't very nice. They're like, well, I was just kidding. And it's like, but were you though? It's it's just using those phrases to cover the fact that you're embarrassed and you don't know how to respond. There's nothing wrong with not knowing how to respond because I think no one knows how to perfectly respond when they're embarrassed other than being accountable and just being like, no, you're right. Like, I'm sorry I said that. Let's just keep moving on. That's what a lot of comments were saying of being like, hey, if, if things do happen like that, the best thing to just say is go, you're right. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Even if you feel like you were in the right or if you were in the wrong it's just easier to do that and move on. Trying to fight it and cause a discourse with your party, just it's just uncomfortable. It's not fun. During those moments, it's, it's good to just set it aside for now, leave it out of the game, play the game, and then afterwards have a discussion about it. Don't, don't bring it into the game. Yeah. I will say the Dungeon Master could have easily avoided this situation with them mainly saying, hey, just a reminder, no essay comments in or out of game, please. Just that. that That's all it could have been. And the player, depending on the situation, could have just been like, oh, you're right. Sorry. My bad. Done. It's gone. All that out the window. The problem with it is they were also saying they were facing a really hard battle. And usually during those times, things can be very stressful. Tensions can be high. Nerves can be everywhere. And so you could be a lot more aggressive and snappy. And so I think this whole group was feeling that. And so when the player said that and the dungeon master responded in that way, yes, I could easily see, even myself, I could see myself being like, whoa, okay, sorry, it was a joke, like, and constantly repeating that because if he was constantly repeating, how was the dungeon master reacting to this person as well afterwards? Well, because as well, like you said, where tensions are high and stuff and, and in these types of serious, I guess, role-playing situations, things slip too. I'm not saying what he said was right but if it's something he is saying it's like yeah it's might slip you know the other thing too with it as well is how quick this dungeon master was willing to kick this problem player out even without having any issues this dungeon master painted the problem player as 
really cool, had no issues, yada, yada, yada. But the first time this person made a mistake, it was, you do this again, you're out of here. And he kept going back. And yes, tensions were high. This player got aggressive, said something stupid, and got banned from it. To me, the dungeon master never viewed this person really as a friend. If they were so willing to just kick him out just like that, instead of like sitting down and talking through it first. The breakup wasn't because of the dungeon master. Because again, I think the relationship was just already on thin ice and that one moment just broke the camel's back. But I do think the Dungeon Master was in the wrong for handling the situation poorly. Yeah, well, what you say is correct. Also, on another note, though, going back to this individual has a personal experience and maybe they might have not fully coped with it. And so when stuff are brought up, they're going to go from zero to 100 real quick. I mean, it's like stuff that I'm passionate about. If people make bad comments about it, I definitely can see myself falling into the trap of just getting really aggressive really quickly to defend myself or my belief or something I'm passionate about. Mind you, if that individual didn't know it, it's you can't hold it against them because it's like I would they probably would have been more considerate. But then again, you don't have to share your life story with everybody. So that's where... I hope that the OP can get whatever type of help they need as far as maybe still coping with some trauma and things like that. But I think that's with everybody that might have a negative experience either in that category of essay or just in category of anything else. It's pretty easy to just hear it and snap. Everyone can make the mistakes, but thank you for bringing up those points. Thank you, Duke. I, I'm happy to be here. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, come back to Channel 5 News. <laughs> I think consensus here is wasn't the Dungeon Master's fault for causing the breakup, but Dungeon Master did handle this poorly. Let's move on to an uplifting story, shall we? And again, you guys could submit uplifting stories over on our Discord. Click on the link in the description. You will find a channel called Awesome TTRPG Moments. And this one is from Rose. Rose says... Sometimes when one of my players can't make it to a session, I run a simple one shot for the rest of the group. In the last one shot we had, the party had to get out of an escape room. In one of the rooms they were in, they had to figure out how to open two chests that contained clues on how to solve the puzzle in the room. They spent more than 30 minutes on one chest figuring out how to open it. Everyone failed the strength check to push the button on the chest, so they got creative. First, they turned the chest around with the button facing the floor, and they sat on the chest. That didn't work. Then the two of the party members were pushing the chest towards the third member so he could maybe push the button. Didn't work. Then they started stacking rocks on the button in hopes that the weight would push the bottom in. Also didn't work. While thinking what to do next, one party member walks up to the chest and was jokingly saying, what if it was unlocked this whole time? He tried to open the chest by lifting the lid. The chest opens without a problem. They were all dumbfounded. In the same one shot, a player asked me for a clue because they didn't know what to do. The only clue I gave them was telling them that a piece of paper usually has two sides to it. The character only ever looked at one side of the paper, but never thought of turning the paper around. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a little sus that you would need to like have a strength check for pressing a button, <laughs> but that's just a classic example of in D&D, &D, you getting hyper fixated on very much the wrong thing and there being such a simpler solution and the DM's just like, I'm, I'm a wait. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a wait. like there's so many times for some reason, us players will overcomplicate things like opening a door, opening anything. For some reason, we automatically think that it's always locked. And so we always have to find some way to unlock it when usually the solution is just, oh, just open the door, open up the lid. There were so many times where I have DM'd a session and people have come up to me and be like, hey, like you walk up and there's a door and they go, is it locked? And I go, have you tried opening it? And they go, no. I try opening it and I say, the door opens. And they're like, okay. Well, then there's like, everybody gets super untrusting of like, yeah, there's a trap. There's this, there's that. They're like, it's a mimic. <laughs> Let's move on to our last story, shall we? This one is crazy. <laughs> you keep saying that and I keep getting disappointed. <laughs> Just <laughs> Dang, okay. All right, this one's anticlimactic. You ready? I'm so right. I love me some anticlimactic. <laughs> Accused of bait and switching and not running real D&D. So I was a bit tired of these typical adventure parties and wanted to run a game where the character have a tighter social connections. I came up with a campaign where everyone is playing a red wizard of Thay. The characters start at level one. They are apprentices in training. During the campaign, they face the reality of red wizards 
being what they are and must choose whether to try to escape, embrace the organization, or do something else entirely. I imagine the campaign would culminate in the Civil War of Red Wizards. I pitched this game for people in University Gaming Club since the club has nice rooms for gaming and lots of potential players. The game is quickly filled. There is one person I'd loathe to take on board since I've witnessed her causing drama to other DMs. But the club rules say I can't discriminate anyone. So despite my bad feeling about it, I take her in as my fifth player. We have a session zero that goes fine, except she sends a message 15 minutes before we begin that she can't make it. She says we should cancel the session. I disagree and she pivots to offering online presence. Luckily, the room has a conference phone so we can plug her in. The conversation goes fine, I think. Everyone is coming up with character ideas. Although everyone is a wizard, they are choosing different schools. She is just silent through and doesn't react when I ask her questions. Her only question is to ask about character classes, and I repeat, everyone starts as wizards, and they can later multi-class if they want. So yeah, two red flags. I had heard about drama she caused before and she was problematic at session zero, but I couldn't throw her out because of the club rules. On come the first session, everyone arrives buzzing with excitement. Everyone else have shared their character sheet with me at D&D Beyond and gone over the background in private, except her. So I asked her to show me her character sheet. I'm amazed when I see she has made an Azamar Paladin. I'm shocked. Like, didn't she read the campaign ad I posted or listen to anything in session zero? How is this possible? I take a moment to collect myself and tell her that unfortunately this character doesn't fit the campaign as we agreed in the session zero. All characters must be a level one wizard who are apprentices at the Red Wizard organization. So unfortunately her paladin is out, but she can make a new wizard right here. There are spare sheets and level one characters are easy to make. Her reaction, a total emotional breakdown. She starts yelling how she was afraid this was the case, but wanted to give me a chance. How she should have known I'm just another misogynist who wants to ruin her fun. There were two other women among the players as a side note. She starts sobbing, which makes me feel really difficult. She is ugly crying about how I'm not running d and I'm running some shitty homebrew and real d and players make their characters and can choose themselves. If she had been mad and aggressive, it had been easier to take. This was just a punch to the gut. She just kept going and going, showing no move to either leave or make a new character, making everyone in the room extremely uncomfortable. So I just had to stop the session there. Everyone just left while she kept blaming me for ruining her hobby and lying to people by claiming I'm running D&D when I'm really not. It doesn't stop there, though. You see, I told her I'm part of the university gaming club. I've now heard through the grapevine she started contacting club officials with accusations against me, how I baited people to play D&D, but really forced them to play something else, how I discriminate and abuse players. These kinds of accusations could get me banned. I'm a bit shocked, honestly. I need to put up some kind of defense to the club, I suppose, and I don't know if I just need to end this campaign before it even began. It really sucks to just want to give a different experience in gaming and then get told what you're doing is not real D. D. Okay, dude, first of all, don't be complaining on Reddit. Go go to the freaking heads and explain what happened and bring your players with you before things get out of hand and you're the one kicked out. Like whoa <laughs> sir that yeah it's not hard to stand up for yourself in that situation like head whoever then here's what happened here's the witnesses here's the post i made like yeah. sorry personally for me i i don't know how to like talk about what this girl did like it's just one of those <laughs> things where it's like the world revolved around her and she didn't like that she never got a free pass. I really have nothing much to say about this individual that he talked about, except for, I really hope you get the help that you need. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. That's the gist of it. It just sounds like there's a lot going on. Can you imagine just getting ready to play D&D and someone coming in, someone you don't even know just starts having a meltdown. He can also 
go to the head people. And if he knows that she was a problem in other groups, he can get those people as witnesses as well of, okay, how is she a problem for you guys? Like what actually happened? I, I've seen meltdowns happen before, maybe not to this extent, but I've seen meltdowns happen before. And it is just like uncomfy. It's so uncomfy. You don't know what to do. Like some people try to jump in and help and it's like just- But she didn't leave is the thing. She just stood there, cried, ugly cried and made everyone else leave while she was still there. This sounds to me that this is not the first time she's done no. this. Like there's no way this is not the first time she's done this because in no way did she try to hide it. In no way did she walk away. Like no one's that committed to a tantrum. And she goes, I knew this was the case. Like she knew that her character that she was bringing was the wrong thing because she didn't pay attention. No, it's not that she didn't pay attention. It's just she, she didn't care. She didn't care. Yeah, it's what? Mind you, this campaign sounded super cool. Oh no, this <laughs> sounded really freaking cool. Like I, I was reading this and I was like, this would be fun. I'm not going to lie. This would be a ton of fun. The DM had a great idea. I think that's great. Having a whole Red Wizard story kind yeah. of thing. Like that, that sounds super cool. So I'm sorry to that person that your campaign probably didn't happen, but I hope yeah. it happened because that actually sounded really, Golly, really cool. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I want to take away from this story, though, is that when, when gaming clubs or just any groups in general... When they have a no discrimination rule, it usually leads to more problems. Let me point out, yes, discrimination is bad. We shouldn't do it. Although there should be rules in place where if there are problem people that there is a way to get these people out. For me personally, I've had experiences where we had no discrimination rules. So for instance, I was a part of a sketch comedy club at our college. I was the I was the manager over it. I ran the shows. I blocked everything, had it ready. And there was a certain individual that had needs that needed to be met. And because of these needs, for some reason, even though there was a tryout process, something came up where I, I couldn't tell this person no, they couldn't be in. And it wasn't because of their needs, it's just because they weren't the right fit for the group. And we didn't know what this person was gonna bring. But because of these needs and because of this no discrimination rule, I had to bring this person in. So it was almost like if you didn't let them in, they'd go and be like, they're discriminating because of my needs. I think it was because they got kicked out of a different group. Mm, and because of that, the activities area, if this happened again, they could get in trouble. And so it got put on me and they were like, no, no discrimination. So we put this person in and, oh my gosh, let me tell you, like, it just sucked. Like, it really, really sucked. And there's no way I could get this person out. And it just was... It was hell for me. It was hell for a lot of people. And it just was stressful. And so when it comes to these no discrimination things, there needs to be a rule set forth how to get someone out in a good way. Well, I also think there needs to be specifications of what does no discrimination mean. There you go. That's the other part is, are you discriminating them because, oh, no girls allowed? Are you discriminating them because, in our past TTRPG story, because they have autism? Right, like, yeah. Are you discriminating them for whatever reason? Like, I feel like there needs to be some type of specification. It might be a long list, yeah. but there is ways to word it so it sounds more simplified. And then on the other side, there needs to be a player agreement of, okay, if you're going to participate in this group, you need to be respectful X, Y, Z. And if you don't, if you break one or two or more of these rules, you get to get kicked out. It's almost like... In jobs, there's some jobs, there's laws out there that protect you from just getting fired for absolutely no reason. But then on the other end, there's your agreement of, oh, if I was late to work two or three times, they can fire me without any questions. You know, stuff like that, that I think should be placed for these types of games because stuff like this should not happen no. and it can be avoided. It have rules of like an agreement of, as a DM and as a player. And I'll give a really good experience about it. So like, I have my Discord and everything. And, you know, we get people all the time joining our Discord. But then there's some people who would join in and you can tell are just you're just a problem. They, they throw the mood off. They want the attention from themselves. They're negative and it's not good. We do have a three strike rule in our Discord. And usually when people get a strike, 
they're usually cool afterwards. But there's some people in there that you just know are there to cause problems. And a lot of my mods will come up to me and be like, okay, do we do a strike? Look, what do we do? And I literally go like, no, ban them. Like, kick them out of the group. We don't want them there. And they're like, but the three strike rule. And I'm like, yes, I understand. But this problem is doing more harm being here than if we kick them out. And I think that's an important part is like, what is causing more harm? Would it cause more harm to keep the person in? Or would it cause more harm to kick the person out? I think that is a good rule to have and for people to look at because the no discrimination thing, yes, it's important, but that could be a downfall of a gaming group because there's no way they can kick a problem player out and it ruins the fun for 20 other people. So in conclusion, discrimination is bad, but there <laughs> needs to be some rules. Yes, there needs to be some rules. All right, let's jump into the last uplifting story. This one is by Skullmate, and this story is called The Effort Bucket. It's the Effort Bucket. This happened not too long ago when I was in a D&D club at school. I played a fighter dragonborn named Azazel, who I believe is one of the best characters to date. Aze and another member of the group were trapped in a cave when it caved in due to an explosion. Exploring the cave, they stumbled across two items. One was a coin with a skull on one side and a dagger on the other. Aze pockets the coin and moves on. He ends up flipping it skull side down and the skull was burned into his hand. Still kept the coin though. Now this is the second item, a bucket. There were some stones to the side of the bucket and when we dropped one into the bucket, it disappeared. We inspected the bucket and there were some Sylvain writing inscribed onto the bucket. We couldn't read it, but someone else could. So we took the bucket with us. We end up escaping the cave and showed the bucket to our wood elf. And when she read the description, it read the effort bucket. With the bucket back in my hands, the wood elf wanted me to put the bucket on my head to see what would happen. We do so. <laughs> we do so. And after a few seconds of holding the bucket onto her head, I lifted the bucket to see that her entire head was almost encased in a thick layer of ice. Turns out that the bucket was an interdimensional portal and our wood elf was briefly transported to the killer snowstorm of the mountains. She survived, but with the toll of almost max 4d6 freezing damage, we were all on edge. So moral of the story, don't mess with an interdimensional transporting bucket unless you know what it is. Or just say F it and mess with it anyway. <laughs> My character was would have put his butt in it, but that's just... <laughs> <laughs> Just an icicle of butt. You probably would have been able to get it out. What if you farted mid that? Would your fart be trapped in the icicle? Okay, it would be trapped in the icicle or it would explode it depending on which. Oh my gosh. You could use it as like a gas bomb. <laughs> like throw the icicle at someone and hit someone in the face and just gas them. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thank you to everyone who submitted their awesome TTRPG stories. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Reddit stories. Hope you got some uh, good feedback and advice from that. Hopefully this will help you out if you're facing a similar situation as one of these people. But, and again, before we go, remember these episodes are on Spotify so you can listen to them on podcast form. So head over there, click on the link in the description and go get a follow, go give it a rating. We really do appreciate it. But that's been it for today. I'm Duke and this is wife, Amy. Amy. Sign them out. I am wife, and this is Stitch. See you next time. <laughs> Get me plushies. <laughs>